Welcome to the Princess and the Bee podcast, the place to be to build your empire as queen of your body, business, and life. I'm your host, Kimberly Spencer, founder of crownyourself.com, and I'm an award-winning coach, Amazon best-selling author, and multi-passionate entrepreneur. Each week, I give you the systems, strategies, and success stories to help you master your mindset, communicate with ease, and triple your productivity so you make the income and the impact you deserve. Imagine this podcast as your weekly spark of inspiration as you take it to the next level with all the bees of your life, body, business, bank account, boys and babies. Let's make it rain. Hello and welcome back to The Princess and the Bee. Before I dive in to today's message, I am so excited to share with you the fact that I have a few spots open this month for one-on-one private consults. These are 90-minute consults that I do for a fraction of the price because I believe you should test drive a coach before you buy them. So in these consults for $147, you get 90 minutes with me. And whether we choose to continue our coaching relationship or not, you get five strategies at least to enhance your clarity, boost your energy, triple your productivity, enhance your courage, and improve your influence so you make that impact that you want to make. So I am not about having like a 90-minute sales conversation that's a pitch fest. I want you to receive massive value and whether we choose to work together or not and move our relationship forward in that private coaching arena, this at least allows you to walk away with strategies that can change and skyrocket your life for the next six months if you put them into place. So I invite you to go to crownyourself.com forward slash private coaching and sign up for a one-on-one 90-minute consult. I am so excited to work with you. And now to today's message. So I wanted to come to you because you may have noticed Perhaps, maybe it was just me that noticed, that for the the past four months, I was doing an experiment. I was very, very excited, slash nervous, slash scared to do this experiment because it was something that I have been doing for a long time and cutting it out of my life was definitely a massive shift. I stopped getting manis and petties. And I stopped getting my eyelashes done. And I know this sounds like super, super she-she and sort of like girly, but I know a lot of a lot of my clients, a lot of you out there, go and get your regular Manny Petties. Oh, and I took out my hair extensions. Like you, if you see in my all my amazing photos, they're all actually a little older than I like. We're doing a brand reshoot uh, later this month. And and I took out all my extensions like a year ago. And I have felt so free that like six months later, I decided, you know what? I'm going to test and do this experiment with taking out my eyelashes, my fancy, fancy eyelashes. And st- I stopped getting manis and petties. And why did I do this? So I started to notice that I was doing my self-care routine for the benefit of everybody else. Now I know, and I'm a big preacher of self-care, self-love, personal grooming, all the things that are fancy and girly like that. I love them. But what I started to notice just for myself last year was I was doing all these things to look good for other people and not to feel good for myself. And that's the massive shift of self-care. That is the massive, massive, like, anti-self-care. Because self-care, it's all about yourself. Like, you're taking care of yourself and you're doing it as a way of showing yourself that you love yourself. So why I took my extensions out, why I stopped getting my eyelashes done, and why I stopped getting manis and petties was because I wanted to show myself that I loved myself without all the things. 
like without the the fancy hair and the 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 really nice manicured nails like they were nice I, I kept up and took care of them for myself but it wasn't like I didn't polish them I didn't do all the things I just kind of let them be filed and did that because I wanted to show myself that it wasn't about those other things I had to shift my show from being an outward show to inward because I was in a period in my life like I said um, I had I had a massive breakthrough in back in September at HPA, which if you have heard my interview on the Hyperconscious podcast, I would highly recommend going there after this one, obviously, and <laughs> listening to it. Um, because and I will link to that in the show notes because it was so freaking good. And I loved it so much. And those those guys, Kevin and Alan, are just amazing. And that was that was such a powerful breakthrough for me that I really needed to go in. I needed to go in and see who I was without all the the showy fluff, without the extensions, without the the perfectly manicured nails, without the perfect eyelashes and waking up looking fabulous. Like I needed to wake up and feel fabulous just because I'm freaking fabulous and not because I had fancy eyelashes that made my eyes look even better. Like I wanted to be real and authentic as fuck and like get to know the person of who I am becoming, that glorious future self who does have, by the way, she does have eyelashes and perfectly manicured nails, but she doesn't do it for anybody else. She does it for herself because it makes her feel good. So I literally got my first manicure in like four months um, a week ago because I just, I got home and I was like, you know what? My gut, my everything said, go take care of yourself. And that was when I knew, when my intuition was like, go do this for you, enjoy the the massage and the hot bath or the hot foot bath and the the somebody pampering you, like go enjoy that and like receive that because I had to be in a place to receive it because it comes, it, it goes beyond eyelashes and manicures and extensions and all that. What self-care is about, it's the practice of the feminine energy, which the feminine energy is a practice of receiving. And when you have come, like for me specifically, because I can't speak for you, but I can speak from my own personal experience um, out of integrity. And for me, receiving the breakthrough about something as that I you know, consider s- and I think as as everyone would consider to be very, very earth shattering and sort of just, it, it's still hard for me to fucking say it. It's still hard for me to say rape. Like for me to, for me to come to that, that realization and to be, say that word and own that experience of what happened to me. And I, I mean, as you can see, like I, I still struggle with saying that word because my internal representation, that image in my mind of what society has kind of conditioned us to say about what rape looks like, especially in like TV and things, is it's like this violent, violent act and it's this huge thing. And I think for me with that experience in particular to expand on it for a hot second in a slight tangent um, was that it wasn't it wasn't violent. I mean, there was some elbowing in, involved of like, get the fuck off of me. But it was it was invasive. And it, it really went against my perception. And so the thing is, with any sort of sexual assault is like our ability as as women, especially with our feminine energy, like we are naturally um, internal, like guys are external, they're, their plumbing hangs outside, like our plumbing is internal for naturally born women. And that is the the physical manifestation of you know something being internal means in order to have sex you are receiving in essence and i have struggled for a long time with receiving 
and that concept of receiving. And so the cell, it, it was kind of normal in essence looking back that I would obviously shift and th- make you know, my self-care and outward show because I do have a very highly masculine energy and I'm very comfortable tapping into that and having that be like, oh, okay, I'm just going to take my time. I'm going to take, you know, take my space. I'm going to do this for the people because that is, that is my show. But it's not, that's not really who I am. That's not the gut thing on like the visceral level of my entire being. And as a being, as a being with both masculine and feminine energies that we all have, and it's it's all about that balance. Some of us have more masculine energies and some of us have more feminine energies. It's not about gender. Um, but the feminine energy is about receiving, receiving pleasure, receiving joy, receiving gifts, receiving compliments. And when I found out, when I had that breakthrough that I had, and I'm like getting really hot now now talking about this so that I know that this is like really like when you get really hot, it's like that divine message is just coming, coming through. Like when I, when I had that breakthrough that I had in um, September of 2018, like and by the time of December, uh, realizing that I was doing these quote unquote self care act, these self care acts that were uh, things that you would receive pleasure from, receive joy, receive service from other people. Like you get a manicure, you get your eyelashes done, you got your hair done. You're receiving a service. I was struggling with my ability to receive, and I had to rem, and I couldn't remedy that by doing all of these things. I had to remedy that within myself first before I went out and got a mani-pedi. And it seems like it's like mani-pedis offer breakthroughs. Uh, but that that is something that I challenge you to look at. Are you doing your self-care for the benefits of others, for the outward showing appearance of others that you have your shit together? Or are you doing your self-care because you love yourself? Because you love the woman that you're becoming. Because you love every single day that person who who you are working to be. Because that is truly the level of self-care. That is self-care with, self, with compassion. Like, and you cannot have, I think I wrote a blog about it. I, I will link to it in the comments. Um, but you cannot have self-care without self-compassion. Because self-care is not selfish. Actually, the word selfish means just caring about yourself. So what makes that bad or wrong? What makes it bad or wrong is when you put that spiritual twist. It's not anything wrong in the physical realm. There's nothing wrong with getting manis, petties, eyelashes, extensions, anything. There's nothing, massages, any of that. There's nothing wrong with any of that. What is wrong is the intention behind it. And back why I stopped doing it was because my intention was to please others, that outward sort of people pleasing disease to please thing, rather than pleasing myself and knowing that it came from such a place of love for myself, that that's why I do it. That's why I go forth and get massages. That's why I I I take care of my nails or and allow other people and receive other people's service and taking care of me. That's something, and I think especially as women, we are such nurturers by nature, most of us, and it's very easy for us to serve others. I mean, especially if you're a mom and uh, a wife or you have a life partner, like you are, you are serving constantly. And if you have a business, you're serving your customers and you're serving your team, you are serving and you are giving constantly. You also have to receive, but sometimes, especially for those who have struggled or who have gone through some form of sexual assault, receiving can even be a challenge. Like I've dealt with a lot of clients who have struggled with receiving compliments, like because it's so it's so easily taught of you know deflecting that compliment. Oh, I don't look like. Oh, you look great today. Oh, um, well, thanks. You know, it's just it's nothing. Why do we do that? It's old shitty programming. That's why. It's it's us as women 
especially having that belief of like that we have to have this more masculine programming to succeed, maybe. I mean, or I could possibly just be projecting here, but that more masculine programming of like to succeed or those programming that we had when we were growing up of saying, you know, don't brag about who you are. Don't bra- don't show off. Don't be showy. Like, don't like don't be selfish. And so we attach these meanings onto these things that aren't necessarily true. So it goes back to looking at the intention of why you're doing this. Like if you struggle to receive a compliment, I challenge you, sister, to practice receiving compliments and like and and in order to do that, give them more, like give them more and you'll receive them more. But practice the art of receiving And so now I'm totally comfortable with going back and getting another mani-pedi and going back and getting my eyelashes done and going back and getting extensions should I choose to make that choice. But it's coming, it's not coming from something that is, is a desire to please externally. It's a desire to take care of me. It comes down to that intention, that initial, that spiritual intention, that holy purpose to take care of this vessel that spirit that soul dwells in that our soul dwells in dw- dwells dwell like dw- <laughs> i'm so like a i'm caffeinated but p i'm like I, like dwells it, it just dwells mixed with elves like i felt very elvish apparently i guess i mixed the two words i have no idea how i did that but Like our soul dwells in this body. There it goes. There's the word. (laughs) Our soul dwells in this body. And we're nurturing this temple, this palace. But if that intention of nurturing it comes from the desire to please others rather than the first desire to please ourselves, to honor ourselves as a show of love for this vessel, this temple, this dwelling place of spirit, then that is that is where we go awry. So look at how can you really infuse your self-care practice with the joy of receiving that feminine energy. And I challenge you to to just look at your self-care practices and have you been going at those practices? Is it just because it's kind of a routine that you get a mani-pedi every two weeks? Why is that? Question it. Question why that is. Question why you're doing that. Are you doing that just because it's habit? Are you doing that because you want to please other people? Are you doing that because you believe that you have to have a mani-pedi to look professional? I know many, many professional women, and I've worked with many, many professional women who don't get regular mani-pedis, and that's okay. I've worked with many professional women who do get regular mani-pedis, and that's okay too. The thing is, is I challenge you to look at your self-care routine and ask, who are you doing it for? There's there's one of my favorite scenes in the movie Eat, Pray, Love, where, um, and I love the book too, uh, by Elizabeth Gilbert. In the movie, Julia Roberts, who is playing Elizabeth, she looks at this beautiful negligee in Italy, and she asks, like, who for? Like, who do, like, she wants to get it. She obviously wants to get it, but she just doesn't have quote unquote anyone to impress there's no man in her life to wear it for and her friend I think her friend's name was Sophie or something says it's for you it's for you to feel beautiful it's for you to feel glorious and cared for it's for you Because if you're doing it for the other people, you're going to attract the wrong people into your life anyways. You're going to attract people with that same sort of desire to people please rather than people who are totally 100% secure in themselves. Because perception is projection. So look at your self-care routine. How much of it has been for you 
and how much of it has been to please other people or to show something to society or a out of a belief you think you have to. And then check in with yourself and see what are the self-care practices that really ignite your fire, that like light your feminine spirit on fire. Like for me, I love massages. I love a good massage. I also love a mani-pedi. I just was doing them for the wrong reasons. So I challenge you to look at your self-care routine and just ask why. Why are you doing that? For whom are you doing it? Are you doing your hair regularly to impress everybody and to have a fabulous Insta story? Or are you doing it because you want to look glorious. You want to walk down the, the street with an extra bounce in your step feeling like, oh, I got this because my hair gal does amazing work. And I got to receive the pleasure of her service. Shout out to Kelly out there because she does amazing work. Um, she's my hairstylist. So I challenge you to look at who are you doing it for? Now, if you love this episode, if you found massive value, if you are <laughs> questioning now whether you need to get your regular Manny Petties, then please, please, please take a screenshot of it. Tag me on Instagram. I love seeing them. I love reposting them. I love seeing your takeaways and your breakaways and your breakthroughs. And if you feel compelled, if you feel aligned, I invite you to join me one-on-one -on -one for my high-performance 90-minute consults. I have a few spots left this month, and I am so excited to work with you and break through some of these limiting beliefs that may be holding you back on a an emotional, mental, intentional level rather than just the practices that you're doing on the physical realm. If you love this episode, please leave us a review. And I have a special bonus for any one of you who leaves a review and screenshots it and emails it to info at crownyourself.com. I have a special hypnosis for you that as, is just a gift to thank you for being a loyal listener. As always, my fellow empire builders, own your throne, mind your business, and make it rain. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If what you heard resonated with you, be sure to subscribe and share your breakthroughs and ahas with me by leaving a review on iTunes so I can keep the magic flowing your way. And if you aren't already following us on social media, come experience the extra inspiration and queenly convos on Instagram at crown yourself now or visit our website at crownyourself.com. I am so excited to connect with you in the next episode. And in the meantime, go out there and create a body, business, and life that rules.